So science has a very important role to play in uh, helping shape our chemicals policy. And it's, this is a time-honored role um, that goes back a long way. Um, Rachel Carson believed very strongly, for example, um, that those of us who are privileged as scientists who have knowledge have an obligation, a moral obligation, to bring that knowledge out of, in, of the sort of soundproofed obscurity of the medical literature and actually take it into the political arena and insist that the regulatory system respond uh, to the new science. And I think she was right about this. And her influence then transformed an entire generation of scientists who saw that um, the, the right to know um, was really followed by a moral obligation to take action. And so in the late 60s and early 70s, you saw in the United States um, scientists acting as gladiators, if you will, for their own data, um, who were willing to insist that lead be banned from paint and gasoline on the, on the basis of, of the good science that they were bringing forward, showing that very tiny amounts of exposure to lead were, were devastating to brain development in children and in fact were extinguishing intelligence of children in ways that would affect them for, for life. And so um, even when they were finished objectively analyzing the data, um, they felt they could not be neutral, um, but rather in advocate that the data um, turn into rational policy to say that lead was inherently unmanageable, inherently unregulatable when it was in gasoline or paint. And we simply needed to take an abolitionist approach and prohibit lead from being in lead and gasoline. And, uh, and that was hard for scientists to do. In fact, some of them, one of my own heroes, Herbert Needleman, received death threats by the lead industry for his position on that. Um, and then other heroic scientists like George Woodwell, an ecologist now in his 80s, um, had data showing that the pesticide DDT was inherently harmful to people and to wildlife and no amount of regulation could constrain it into safety. And so he went on to found um, environmental organizations full of lawyers that would serve as a wedge to change the law to respond to the new science. And so he also turned his science into activism. Those are the scientists who I most admire and who I try to model myself after. But sadly, I think science is now playing a diminished role. Scientists are afraid and there is a kind of a conflation of the idea that objectivity and neutrality are the same thing. And so scientists fear now that if they should advocate on the basis of what their data show, that they have objectively analyzed, that somehow they're no longer being objective. Um, and that's, uh, that cry is coming from industry accusing scientists of emotionalism, should they even go into the public arena and testify, sign letters to governors, uh, and so forth. And uh, when, when really all they're doing is um, explaining what the implications of their research are and, uh, and acting in a, in a moral way. So I would like to see scientists return to their time-honored role of playing a role in the political arena and making clear that after the data are objectively analyzed, if the data are about public health, and if the data are about the chemical adulteration of our bodies, of pregnant women, and we have knowledge that chemicals are insinuating themselves into the pathways for development in ways that sabotage the potential of that child to, um, to think, um, to behave in certain ways, if we're raising the risk of cancer, if we're raising the risk of birth defects, if we're contaminating breast milk, and we in the scientific community have knowledge about that, it becomes then our obligation, based on the privileged position that we hold to have such knowledge, to make sure that the result of our knowledge is not just a paper that sits on the shelf that allows us to get tenure and praise from our colleagues based on the beautiful merits of the elegance of the science, but instead that change, political change, really meaningful change that protects people's lives is, is the result. Um, because science and biology in particular is about the mystery of being alive. It's the study of life and our reverence for life 
is not an, an emotional state, it's rather a moral position and obligation that scientists um, have to play. Now, that being said, scientists can't do this work alone. <laughs> They're busy people. They have to be at the lab bench. They need to be at the field. They need to find funding and so forth. And so organizations like uh, Health and Environment Alliance can serve as a megaphone or an amplifier for the voices of scientists. Um, and can, uh, if you will, uh, scientists can pass the baton to, he to organizations like HEAL who can then really make sure that, uh, and, and be a watchdog for regula the regulatory process. Pay attention to what goes on at this national level, uh, at the international level, um, because this also is a full-time job, right? Paying attention to how rules and regulations get drafted, how they're revised, whether or not they're um, they're binding or voluntary and where the loopholes are. And so there needs to be organizations like HEAL working hand in hand together with scientists where HEAL has its eye on the lawmaking process and the regulatory process to make sure that the good science that's passed to them by the scientists um, doesn't get lost in the process of rulemaking but in fact is, ref is reflected. So we have evidence-based laws. And so we really need both um, advocacy organizations like HEAL um, working together with scientists at the lab bench, but both of them together being willing to um, play uh, a political role. It's, I think science is, uh, is a public servant, first and foremost. It, we do it, especially public health science, is done not just to reveal the problems that the public is experiencing, um, but also to take action to, to protect public health. Um, and so, because public health has um, protection as its goal, as does the, um, the health advocacy community like HEAL, this makes, I, I believe, for a natural partnership.